Hello, Salam Alaikum. Can everyone hear okay? Okay, sorry if I sound a little bit nervous. I'm fairly new to Pal Talk and don't very often speak on the mic. Um, my story of how I embraced Islam started um, probably back in 95, 96. Um, I was, what, 16 at the time. Um, and I basically, it, it, I'd come from a background with, with no religion really. Although I had um, my nan, who was quite a regular churchgoer and very much into Christianity, there wasn't really anyone else within the family that um, had any sort of solid belief in anything. Um, and I basically, I got, I, got my, I got my first boyfriend, if you like, when I was like 15, who happened to be um, a Pakistani guy, um, who wasn't practicing, obviously. And we never spoke about religion with each other. The, the most I knew that, obviously, he was a Muslim, and that um, he used to go to the mosque on a Friday. That, that was it. We never spoke about, you know, his religion, what he believed, or... He just pretty much lived, lived his life the same way as myself. Um, and then I started college in um, 96, doing a business course, and there was a few Muslim, uh, Muslim girls that were on my course who, again, they weren't practicing, they were actually very quite Western. Um, and we became good friends, and again, they, their life was, you know, pr pretty similar to the way that I lived. Um, you know, we used to go out shopping together, they dressed the same way as myself and they liked having the hair done and makeup and whatever else. Um, and I'd always been a person that was very much into like the, the spiritual world and ghosts and sort of dabbled in um, messing about with Ouija boards a little bit. And I'd always found it quite fascinating. And one of these particular girls had, had not long come back from Pakistan. And I heard them one day talking in the, in the canteen area and she was telling stories about gin. And I was just sitting listening to the stories about gin and I was just thinking, I, at that time I matched the gin with the ghosts. To me, I, I classed them as the, the same thing at that time because I didn't have the understanding. Um, and I was just amazed by these stories that they were telling and I kept asking them all the time, oh, you know, tell me more stories about gin and you know, can you see them and where do they live and um, are, are they Muslims, are they not Muslims, are they di all different religions and, you know, can they have children, can you speak to them, um, are they around us all the time. I had all sorts of questions that I was asking them and um, they used to just fill my head with all these different stories and I, I just thought it was amazing. And then from there, I found myself, I'd go to the library and I'd start picking up basic books about Islam and just looking at, you know, what, what are Muslims, what do they believe in, where did the religion come from, did they believe in Jesus, um, what they thought about Jesus. And I just started slowly, slowly reading, you know, just ve very basic, simple things. And I kind of kept it to myself for a while. I didn't, I didn't, you know, say to any of my girlfriends that, oh, you know, I've been reading into the religion or or anything like this, I kept it quite private. And then um, there's a guy that started up a basic Islamic class um, for one hour every week within the college. Um, so I started to attend those classes um, and I, I used to ask the, the, the brother there quite a few questions and it's helpful as well. And then I became more open about the fact that I was looking in, into Islam and um, I got quite a few sisters then that were practicing that I used to go and see at the houses and they used to help me and they gave me lots of different literature that I would often read and I would be taking all this stuff home um, and then the big thing I started looking into like covering what you know why do the women have to dress this way why do they have to wear these scarves on the heads and what's with the long dresses and why do some choose to cover the faces and some don't and I started looking into all this um, and my, my story it kind of went from like I say from like 1996 all the way to 2003 this is how long it sort of took me um, 
and I was constantly going to conferences in London, Birmingham, Manchester, um, and I knew for a number of years that I actually believed in Islam, and I believed that Islam was the truth, but I never took my shahada. Um, and it wasn't until I came to get married, and it was this, it was it was actually the same guy who I, I originally, the guy that I met in '95, who was my boyfriend then. Um, we obviously were going to sort our car out and get and get married, and we 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 went to this particular masjid to speak to um, speak to the guy there about doing the car, and um, I went in with a friend of mine, and my, my husband now, obviously he wasn't there, but my husband now he he was off speaking to um, the imam. And me and my friend sat at the back of the masjid and we were just talking. And to this day, I do not know what my friend was, was talking about because all I'd got in my head was, I need to embrace Islam before I leave this masjid today. Something just kept telling me, you've got to take your shahada today. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. And I just remember looking at my friend and I just said to her, I've, I've, I've got to do it. I've got to become Muslim now. Before I leave, I've got to take my shahada now. And... Um, she told the imam, and, and I can just remember my husband's face just looked at me as if to say, you know, what, what are you doing? Like, we didn't, we didn't discuss this, and, you know, are you sure this is what you want type of thing? And um, I just took my shahada with the imam there. We had witnesses there as well. Um, and then I came out, I went home, I formed my ghusl at home. I, I, I recited my shahada again. Um, and sort of never looked back really. Um, I didn't. I didn't start covering straight away. I think. I think it was about two weeks, two three weeks afterwards that I actually put on um, my hijab and jilbab. Um, at first, I just wore pretty modest clothing, long skirts, you know, really baggy trousers and loose shirts and things like this, and then. I continued to wear those clothes and then I just used to cover my head, but like a bandana style. I um, used to cover my head like that and then that went on for a little while and then, like I say, one day, it was, it was on a weekend, I just thought, right, I'd, I'd dress myself up in the bedroom, put everything on and I just thought, okay, I'm just, today is the day, I'm just going to stick it on and um, I'm just going to go out, I'm just going to face the world and I'm just going to you know, wear these clothes and if... If people are going to look at me funny or people have got something to say, then, you know, they're going to say it. So, um, that's what I did. I just put it and that was in 2003. So it's been a while. It's been like seven years. I'm still learning. Um, still got a lot to learn. Um, but it's the best thing that I ever did. And I'm so glad that, um, you know, I met those people that I met and my life sort of went the way that it, that it did. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. And if anyone's got any questions or anything they want to ask. Has anyone got any questions? So what was the relationship like with your family once you became Muslim? Um, my family, in all honesty, were, were very good. I've been extremely lucky. Um, and my mom, my mom is just absolutely fantastic. She, she, she's just been really accepting of everything. Um, she's read a lot of my books on Islam so that she could understand why um, I wanted to live my life this way. Um, the only thing that did confuse her was was about the covering aspect because she'd met a lot of my friends who were Muslim, who, like I said, were very western and, and dressed like how I did back then um, 
so it kind of confused my mum because she was like, well, you know, these girls are Muslims and, that you know, they, they dress Western clothes and you're going to cover, cover all yourself up and I, I can't understand why, you know, why can't you just dress like them because, you know, they are Muslims, so what, what's the difference? And then I gave her a book about hijab and she read that and then she, she understood more why. Um, but then she did admit to me a number of years after that she did get quite upset about the covering aspect and she, in many a time she did actually cry when she was on her own because she, you know, to, to every mother their, their child is the, is the most, you know, beautiful child ever. Your children are, are the most beautiful things ever created. So can you put that on? Okay, one second darling. Um, so for her, you know, I, I, I'm obviously the most beautiful, beautiful thing to her, and she couldn't understand why, what, you know, why does my daughter, who's so beautiful to me, want want to cover herself up? So she did get quite emotional about it. But now, you know, if you spoke to now, she she prefers to see females dressed in hijab and jilbab than than she does like, you know, the average non-Muslim dressed in Western clothes walking down the street. She thinks we look, you know, she thinks we look really nice. She really loves it. So my family have been brilliant. I've been really, really lucky considering, you know, a lot of sisters that I do know that have um, reverted to Islam and, and the struggle that they've had with their family. I've been extremely lucky, mashallah. Has anyone else got any questions? Um, what advice would you give to non-Muslims in the same or similar situation as you that want to come to Islam? Um, what, what I would say personally is to take your time, um, try and get as much information as you can, different literature, different books, go to different sisters, anything that you can get hold of to do with Islam or any anyone that you can visit that can possibly help you learn about the deen, then, you know, get involved with all these things. But I would say to take your time because it is, you know, it's not just a religion, it's a way of life and it is such a, dr a dramatic change to what you know, to what we living in the West, me living in the West, I, you know, I was brought up, I could wear what I want, I could go where I wanted, you know, drinking, smoking, clubbing, boyfriends, you know, all this type of thing. So it is such a dramatic change for one's life. So I would say for someone to take the time and make sure it's not anything that they're being pushed into or they're not rushing into um, because there are so many different changes they're going to have to make in their life and um, you know you don't want to be going forward and then sort of o overwhelm yourself with you know well I can't do this anymore and I can't do that anymore and then it sort of sets set you back so I'd just say you know put yourself out there make people aware that you are looking into Islam get as much help as you can but just take it steady step by step and just make sure that you don't actually do it until you are 100% within yourself ready to um, take your shahada inshallah um, is your mum Muslim? no my mum isn't a Muslim unfortunately inshallah I've got my fingers crossed inshallah she will um, come to Islam um, she ag already ad admits to me that she agrees a lot with Islam Islam says about about different things and also things that it, um, it would implement within Sharia law as well. She agrees with, you know, a lot of things. So inshallah, um, I'll just keep working on my mum. How long have you been a Muslim? I've been a Muslim since 2003, so uh, seven years now. Alhamdulillah. Are you the only Muslim in your family? Um, yes, I am the only Muslim in my family. Um, Is that, I think that's no other questions. Is there any other questions? Yes, inshallah, Omar will need to explain to her. To her. She does believe in God. Um, I'm not sure what his stance is on um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Never really spoken great detail about that. Um, but she does agree with a lot of uh, moral, m morally, a lot of things to do with Islam. Like in terms of the way that we live, we live our lives day to day. She does agree with a lot of things. Yeah, sit down. 
Anyone got any other questions? Uh, do you miss anything from your former life and do you feel you're missing out on life or all the fun? Um, no, not really, because I was 23 when I actually embraced Islam. Um, so I'd been to clubs, you know, I'd got drunk, I'd had boyfriends, I'd hung around on the streets and done all the things that, you know, teenagers do, and I'd tried smoking and I'd sort of had a go at all of these things, if you like. One thing I never did was, um, I never got involved, yeah, sort of been there, done that, yeah. Never, I never really got involved in the whole drugs thing, um, you know, but I, I did try the smoking and drinking um, and going to clubs, and I was never really a big drinker or a big clubber, so yeah I'm married it's the guy the boyfriend that I met when I was 15 he is now my husband mashallah <laughs> yeah so we've been together like 15 years um, so yeah but I think that was part of the process why it took me so long to actually take my shahada because I was in that relationship with him and obviously at the time he wasn't practicing and although I knew that I believed Islam was the truth um, I still wanted to have that relationship with him at the same time and I knew that I couldn't do both if you see what I mean so I think that's why it actually took me so long to, to take my shahada and then we started discussing about you know getting the niqab done and actually making everything halal if you like so that's what we did, and I, I embraced Islam two weeks before um, we had on the car done. Equally Muslim, yeah. Equally Muslim, the Muslim Brotherhood, yeah. Equally means brothers and sisters, yeah. Allah, Allah, Allah. What's uh, how you doing? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum to everybody in the room. May Allah bless your hearts for money, man. Omar, how you doing? 